I'm Yun Sun Choi, and uh, I'm actually a paper conservator. And uh, this is my first um, museum librarian and archivist group conference. Um, so I've never really spoken to libra librarian and archivist in group. Um, so normally my uh, audiences are conservators, so gentle with me. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I'll be talking to you about our experience of digitizing library and archive materials and producing a guideline based on our experience, especially from a conservation point of view. So, introduction. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about the background, what our project scope was, and the funding body, and uh, what we digitized. Um, if you want to see more about our project, our project team is set up upstairs, and uh, they do have more information. And the uh, poster is also presented. Um, current approach to digitization. Um, I will put this paper into context and discuss the digitization model we followed and why we chose a particular model. Um, the library and archive collection, obviously our collections are unique and different from any other library and archive collections, but you will all say that. And we will see some of the items we have digitized um, and the reality. Um, this paper is all about exploration of our digitization journey we have faced and uh, conservation, and this is the area that I have supported within Tate Digitization Project and where my guideline is based. And the uh, digitization project for the artist material, um, after, after completion of the conservation side of our digitization project, um, we obviously needed to produce the document um, as to what we have learned and how, we, how the project evolved. Uh, to ensure that next time we do the same project, we have something to follow and that we don't make the same mistakes again. Um, I would like to emphasize at this point that this paper is more about the journey to produce the guideline rather than actual guidelines. So the background. This is the Tate Library and the Archive. Um, Tate Library and Archive collection houses some of the most unique material in the world. Some personal documents of important artists, such as Keith Vaughan, um, Barbara Hepworth, uh, Nicholson, Cecil Collins, Rodney, Picasso, um, and many more. Um, we also house artists' study materials, such as their sketchbooks, their artistic plan, and some are three-dimensional, some are glass plate, some are just simple, small drawings and negatives, and, and I've also seen the clump of hair, so our collections really does vary. Um, the collection we house are unique, and you will not find similar items in anywhere in the world, and the important point I would like to make is that they are in a very different, a challenging format, very different condition and challenging format. The bid for the funding uh, for digitization uh, to, uh, to Tate um, began in, I think, year 2011-12, and it was successful. We have received Heritage Lottery Fund to carry out the project, and the conservation side of the digitization project started in May of 2013 and completed in March of 2015. Uh, 52,000 items were selected for the digitization project, and these items were not fully catalogued uh, when we chose them for the digitization. Um, this presented slightly difficulty in establishing intelligent conservation estimation prior to the project, and it was largely unknown exactly what we had and condition they were in, and making future plans slightly challenging. So current approach to digitization. Um, when we started our project, we've looked at two models. Uh, the British Library's Qatar Digitization Project and the National Archives Digitization Project. Uh, both projects were mass digitization project we knew in the UK, and they looked impressive as they were well planned and set up. As far as we could see, these two projects were, had um, the most compre comprehensive published uh, guidelines 
which was also available to us. And we established, we especially like the way the British Library project was set up and planned. Um, we, have the, we have visited the British Library and so the whole project, and we also reviewed their digitization procedure, and it was methodical and logical. And we have based our project, conservation project, largely based on their model. Um, we didn't realize at that point that digitization project the British Library was doing was based on items that were in similar size, format, and condition. So, Tate Library and Archive Collections um, following our institutions, um, following other institutions' uh, digitization model can be a very risky business. And um, as each project is set up for the speci specific reason, and we now know, although it was a well planned model, the British Library and National Archive digitization model didn't really suit us. Um, our collections are, as previous, pre previously mentioned, varied greatly in size format and materials, and these slides, slides shows the variety uh, we dealt with throughout the project. I mean, we photographed about 52,000 items, so I was spoiled for the uh, selections. I've showed you some, some of the books, different sizes. And this is a um, letter <coughs> written by artists on a plastic over two meter long, and this is a coral with a plastic leg, obviously 3D, different dimension, and this is a glass negative, um, the artist material. So this is um, the paint, modern paint the artists have used. And again, the condition of very poor glass plate and pastel cause quite a lot of problem in terms of uh, conservation and preservation. So challenges, um, we soon realized that there were several issues with the multiple handling. Um, earlier speaker mentioned about if you actually have digitization project, it actually reduced the handling, but we actually realized that throughout the digitization project, items are actually handled more. Um, when you have mass digitization, where you have similar items in size and format and material and condition, you can conduct a sample survey prior to the digitization and come up with a procedure. Uh, just rigid uh, procedure for you to religiously follow. And whereas if you have a collection like our collection, you need to do in-depth conservation survey where the conservator will need to go through items by item and check condition of the item to see what support it will need prior, during, and after the photography. Um, upon completion, we realized our collections were handled on average five to six times during the digitization project process. Uh, items were most vulnerable while being handled, so this was a slightly concern to us. Um, re we reviewed our process and realized that this could have been avoided if we planned the process better in the beginning. Um, for example, when we started the project, first thing, uh, first thing conservation did was conduct the survey. We went through each item and produced a survey, um, survey spreadsheet for us to go back to. Um, and so naturally each item were handled. After the completion of survey, we started conservation treatment. Uh, so naturally each item were um, called and the uh, archive, archive team will go through their items and as most of our items are placed in a one small box, um, if you're actually calling a particular item, you have to go through each item to collect the item that you need. So that actually increased the handling. And when we actually completed uh, conservation, sometimes we will actually send our item directly to the photography or sometimes we'll send them back to the archive because it wasn't actually ready for the photography team to take the photograph, which means when the digitization process happens again, the items will then again handled, and if needs extra support during the photography, um, then conservator will have to be called, or technician will have to be called, and then we will be handling the item again. Um, we also realized that um, most handling was done to fragile item, which actually adding slight more concern, because fragile item obviously needed more conservation support than any other robust items. Um, 
This access handling could have been avoided if we planned logistics side better and removing items needing treatment or support during the conservation survey stage um, and send that item direct to the, directly to the conservation studio to be treated and then send directly to the photography department. Then we wouldn't have had like goes and froze and back. So it would have reduced significant amount of handling. Um, managing expectation was a big issue in our project and I will explain later when I actually touched on conservation side. Um, communication between archive, photography and conservation played a large part in, in, in our project um, because quite many staff worked in this project were part-time staff and also since our items needed more conservation support during the photography meant um, due to its format and condition we needed robust system between three departments to make sure everything ran smoothly. And unfortunately, we didn't factor this in the planning stage of this project, but we learned this during the um, uh, project and quickly adapted. So it's caused less problem than we originally thought. And notification period for the conservation item became very important as uh, we also have a very busy program area to support. I mean, you do the digitization project, but your still core activity continues alongside your digitization project. And Tate is the UK's largest uh, uh, lender, and our loans out program is huge. And we also have uh, 18 major uh, exhibitions uh, throughout our four galleries per year. So that needs to be thinking about while we are supporting digitization project. And also, most importantly, uh, when the photography team, photography team digitized a certain collection, it was important that um, their schedule were not interrupted and conservation was present to support the process. And these all needed careful forward planning. Um, to give an example, um, I'll just show you one item. That's the letter written in a, a plastic. Um, this is handwritten letter. I mean, we didn't remove the plastic because plastic was, uh, the tape was a part of our items. And it is over two meter long and it's uh, in really good condition. So our conservation survey didn't actually show there is any problem associated with this item. But whereas our actually digitization process started, we realized this needed significant conservation support as tried to open the plastic, actually damaged the plastic as the plastic became opaque. So, prime example. So conservation, um, digitization, not conservation project, very important. Um, our digitization project uh, presented interesting conservation and research opportunities as unique items with the challenging conditions are interesting to conservators. However, this was not a digitization, this was a digitization project, not conservation project. The issue here was largely managing conservators' expectation. Um, it was challenging constantly move, to move away from conservation issue to minimum intervention and preservation to support the digitization project. Um, most importantly, it was vital that conservation stayed focused throughout the project to ensure that the, we do not become a bottleneck to photography by spending too long on any treatment. In Tate uh, digitization project, uh, conservation actually started well before the photography started. So we were ahead of preparing and treating the item. But since our photography teams was very, very fast and good, they were catching up on us really quickly and we were keep feeling being chased. So that was, um, it was good that we started early, but it was still very a bit difficult to manage. Um, as digitization is becoming a very important part of library and archive for access reason, conservators are increasingly met with several ethical challenges. Um, having items ready for the digitizations are very different from making the item safe to handle and structurally sound. Um, for the digitization, a, a tear or missing part may not be repaired um, unless or that tear or missing part will cause handling issue or further damage during the photography. 
Um, having items ready for the digitization may be in short, short term make sense, um, but for long term preservation purpose, this may not entirely cost effective as item may eventually need to go through full conservation treatment or continuous conservation treatment. Um, we felt that we needed to have balance right, balance right throughout the project. Um, during our digitization project, we came across major conservation research opportunities. Um, just to show you, cellar tape. And this item is a part of the background, which is Cecil Collins. And, uh, Masking tape. Um, conservators love to remove them because they cause irreversible damages to the paper items. It discolors, it oxidates, it actually brittle the paper. Um, conservators always discuss how effective way, to, how to remove them effectively. But item like this, uh, our collection shows that artists actually use them as a part of their artistic inspiration or part of their uh, artistic material. So to throw back at conservators, how do we keep these things? And that's a major research and something we need to look into more. Um, other thing, that's, this is a modern oil and acrylic on paint on paper. Um, this is modern oil and acrylic is not paintings conservators domain anymore because obviously artists try to use them on paper as well. So we don't really know much about its effect on paper. So again, another really interesting research. We, weren't, we didn't look through this during the digitization project to support the digitization project, but this actually triggered really interesting conservation project. <coughs> So, um, after completion of the conservation side of the digitization project, we needed to document what worked well and what we need to tweak and improve. Um, in our guideline, we emphasize the uh, importance of full survey and way to document and share the information in shared drive for the whole digitization project team to access, just to ensure that the process conservation team is making is shared and everybody knows the progress we are making. And, these two, um, this, this two uh, survey form shows our revised survey form. Um, main difficulties in our, uh, our digitization was to find out cradle support, notification period, handling support, handling support notification. Our conservation survey is also different as our collection needed more in-depth treatment than other digitization projects. Um, we have spent generous amount of our project time and effort to conservation and we needed that support because of our collection. Um, our short conservation treatment time may be seen as uh, others as uh, uh, in-depth conservation treatments. Um, so I think I'm short in time so I'm gonna fast forward. Uh, just to conclude, our reflecting, uh, after reflecting on our project and its scope, we've realized that there is no simple guideline to fit all. Even though some looked impressive and logical, we realized that the reason why our project was successful, although there are lots of learning and mistakes, it was because our ability to adapt quickly and evolve, um, not to mention our amazing project team and the project manager. Um, possibly the most important lesson we've learned from our project is to share the experience for the future project, because when we were looking for a, a guideline, we didn't see many of them. Thank you very much. <laughs>